Well, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to our service this evening. This is a new little innovation, Evening Peter, uh, whereby I thought I'd come out a little early and just give a little bit of a chit chat and say hello to people. Evening Janice, nice to see you. Um, just so there's a little bit more interaction, really, because otherwise we just uh, come out and do the service and go away again, and we don't really get a chance to speak to anybody. So, evening Irene, nice to see you. So we're going to try this um, just for five minutes before the service, maybe five minutes afterwards. And you can even share your thoughts about the sermon, perhaps, afterwards, as long as they're nice ones. So, we've got 12 people. Also a good test, this is, of course, that um, I'm on the right channel. <laughs> Hilary, good evening, nice to see you. And because uh, there was one time where I uh, unfortunately put it on the wrong Facebook page. And uh, oh, that's me on the iPad. There was one time where I uh, I'll just turn that down. I was coming on the iPad there, and the sound was coming through. Laura, good evening. Nice to see you. So of course it's Corpus Christi this evening which is a very important day. We give thanks for the Eucharist and for the gift of the Eucharist. What a lovely idea, thank you. Good evening, Marion, nice to see you. And Sandra, hello, good evening, welcome. says there are 15 people watching. Christine, evening Christine, and Anne, welcome. 17 now. I wonder if we'd have had this many on a Thursday evening in church, who knows. Julie, Julie and Eric, welcome, good evening, nice to see you. Yes, yeah, like everybody gathering before the service. And Christine from Cumdare, welcome. At least I know the microphone's working. I always have a little bit of a nervous thing when I start the service, whether the sound is working, but hopefully somebody would put in the messages if they couldn't hear. And Mandy, welcome. David, Noswetha, Kroiso. We're up to 20 now, that's good. Amy, nice to see you. And Elizabeth, welcome. Sound is good, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Julie, thank you, nice to see you. And Emma, welcome. Oh, up to 23 now. Hayley, good evening. Suzanne and Elizabeth again, yes. And Meryl, welcome, good evening, nice to see you. All oh, 24, that's good. There's one thing we were thinking about, uh, and Angela, welcome. I was discussing with Reverend Peter before the service. Uh, Linwen, is that? Keith, Nicholas, uh, Angela, good evening. Good evening as well. Back to you. One thing we were discussing was the idea of having possibly a little Zoom meeting, maybe after the Sunday service, to take the place of coffee. Stephanie, welcome. Um, we could do it on the iPad in church, we were thinking. Reverend Peter and I could make ourselves a cup of tea and coffee and we could all have a chat together. We were thinking about possibly setting up a Facebook group for all those who would be interested and then we can use that to give out the password for the Zoom meeting. So let me know what you think. Karis Noswetha, good evening. Because um, I think we're in St Luke's on Sunday where the signal is pretty good. St James even. <laughs> Had a whisper from stage left then. Sorry, we're in, St. we're in St. Luke's last Sunday, St. James this Sunday, where the signal is okay, but we'll have to see about that. It's not quite as good as the others, but... Uh, and takeaway coffees, I thought it would be nice, wouldn't it? So we'll see how that works. We can always try it. Um, would be great to talk, yes. 
Maybe in, well, it might not be time for this Sunday, but during this coming week, I can set up a Facebook group uh, for Zoom for maybe next Sunday. Because then we'll be in, where will we be then? Back here, won't we? Yes. Uh, that'll be better, actually. So perhaps week on Sunday. Anyway, it's seven o'clock now, so we ought to start the service. Uh, doing a very good job maximising technology. Yes, it's all a learning curve, very much so. So, we're ready to start in a minute or two. We will actually just keep a few moments silence and then we will begin the service. So, welcome everyone. Very nice to have you with us on this special evening. Evening Spencer. Here we are. All right, see you in a minute. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. And keep you in the love of Christ. So good evening everyone. Noswaitha, a chroeso cynnes iawn, i'r eglwys St. Fagan. Welcome to St. Fagan's Church this evening. As we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi, of course, Latin for Body of Christ where we give thanks to God for the gift of the Eucharist, where we come to know his son in bread and wine, where we receive the gifts of eternal life, the sacrament which nourishes us and strengthens us for our work in the world. And as I shall mention in the sermon, it's rather ironic that we gather to celebrate the Eucharist when we can't all of us partake of it. But nonetheless, we can still give thanks for it and earnestly pray for that day when once again we will be able to share it together and receive the full fruits of God's blessings. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of God's love revealed in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of your redemption. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him one-tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this evening is Psalm 116. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. The second reading is taken from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. John. Glory we to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, 
and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, did you know that today is the 163rd day of 2020? And according to one of those ingenious apps that we all seem to have on our phones nowadays, that means that we are, wait for it, 44.26% of the way through this year. And in case you're interested, we reached the halfway mark three weeks from today on Thursday the 2nd of July. Now I don't know about you, but recent events make it feel to me like we've lived through several years all squashed together rather than simply almost 50% of one year. So much has happened and our lives have changed so dramatically that it's, it's hard sometimes to remember what life was like before the full impact of COVID-19 came along. Now certainly, of course, church life has been transformed along with everything else. Little did I imagine back in March that I would be conducting services in an empty church looking into my phone or that we would still be doing that several months later. So many important festivals have gone by, not celebrated in the usual way. Holy Week, Easter, Ascension Day, Pentecost, and now, of course, Corpus Christi. On each of these days, we've experienced the pain of not being able to be together as we normally would. We ache, perhaps, for 2020 to hurry up and be gone in the hope that next year might bring things back to some sort of normal. I guess we'll wait and see and find out. And the disruption, of course, that we have experienced is felt particularly acutely today. Corpus Christi, as I mentioned, meaning body of Christ in Latin, was established as a feast day in the year 1264 as a day to focus exclusively on the Eucharist. It's held on a Thursday to mirror Maundy Thursday, the day when we recall Jesus instituting the Eucharist at the Last Supper. Now, back in the 13th century, Eastertide lasted until Trinity Sunday. And so this day was the first Thursday in ordinary time. And it was felt that you couldn't properly celebrate the Eucharist as such on Monday Thursday uh, because there's too much else going on. For one thing, there's quite a sombre atmosphere on Monday Thursday. After all, it's the night when Jesus is betrayed, when he's arrested. And it's the day before he dies. And there's also on Monday, Thursday, the theme of Christian service, which, of course, is exemplified by Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. And so, as I mentioned earlier, it's a very deep irony, really, that on the very day when we celebrate the gift of the Eucharist, we can't meet together to participate in it. On the very day when the sermon would normally emphasise the importance of coming to Mass and receiving your Holy Communion, that can't happen. On the day which should be a happy celebration, we are instead reminded of the difficulties and problems which still surround us. And yet, I still believe that this Feast of Corpus Christi can speak very powerfully to us in the midst of our present crisis. And this crisis reminds us, of course, 
of all that's wrong in our world, of its broken nature. And as I said on Sunday, even the other main item on the news at the moment, the killing of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protests, that's an equal reminder, is it not, of the pain and the suffering that exists for so many in our world. But surely the Eucharist too is a powerful symbol of the things that are wrong in our world, because at the heart of it is the memorial of a life shattered, nailed brutally to the cross. And the very symbols that we use in the Eucharist, which become for us the means of receiving the sacrament, the bread and the wine, the broken body and the blood of Jesus, they are symbols, aren't they, of the violence and brokenness of our world. And so the Eucharist is not an escape from the realities of our world. Instead, the Eucharist confronts those realities head on and even, you might say, embraces them. COVID-19, of course, has reminded all of us of the fragility of our bodies and we've had to take measures to protect them. George Floyd had the breath squeezed out of him. The slaves were treated as mere things to be herded and traded. And people of colour down the centuries have been abused and attacked. All of this shows us what happens when the human body is not respected. In the Eucharist, however, the human body is venerated and worshipped, shown to be incredibly special. In the Gospel today, Jesus says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. In normal times, we receive Jesus' body into our body. And so we become united with him. We are incorporated into God's very life. Our bodies become one with his and are invested with a dignity that can never be taken away, either by disease or by our fellow men and women. And the Eucharist is also about gift. In the Old Testament reading, as a precursor to this sacrament, King Melchizedek brings to Abraham gifts of bread and wine. In the reading from 1 Corinthians, we're reminded of how Jesus, in the same way, gave the bread and the cup to his disciples at the Last Supper. And of course, in the Gospel, Jesus says how the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This generosity that we see in God stands as a model for all of human society to live by. And finally, of course, the Eucharist is about hope. It points us forward to the great banquet of the kingdom, which we believe is in store for all of us. In the Eucharist, we join in worship with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven. The Eucharist was never meant to be a permanent thing. Jesus gave it to us as a stopgap measure to keep us going until his return to the earth, when all sacraments will cease, when all disease, all famine, all discrimination and all violence are banished forever. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, says Jesus. So on this very strange and unusual feast of Corpus Christi, let us remember that the Eucharist embraces the realities and the brokenness of our present world. It transforms them by incorporating each one of us into the body of Christ. Most of all, it keeps our eyes 
firmly fixed on the glorious future which God has in store for each and every one of us. Amen. Gwedeun, let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you feed us with the bread of life. Fill our hearts with the fruit of your abundant goodness and sanctify our lives that they may resonate with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our mystery, we pray for the church. We pray for our Bishop June and all ministers of the sacraments. We pray for all who preside at the Eucharist, those who administer the bread and wine, those in better times who take communion to the housebound, and those in residential homes. As the Church celebrates and participates in these mysteries of your love, so may our lives be filled with your glory. Lord, in your mercy, God of the harvest, we pray for civic leaders, for a just and equal sharing of the earth's resources. We pray for all who work in agriculture and the food industry, for local shops and those who distribute the fruits of your creation around the world. Lord, in your mercy, God of hospitality, we pray for all who are hungry, physically and spiritually. We pray for day centres for the homeless, for lunch clubs for the elderly, and for own sharing in fellowship when bread is broken and wine outpoured. Thank you for all who feed our minds and inspire our spirits, for preachers and for those who mediate our feeding on your word. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our God of our loving, in the bread we offer our lives, our bodies, and our brokenness, in the wine as the blood is poured out for us on the cross. We offer our pains and the suffering of your word. We pray for all those people who are not well at this time, whether they're in hospital, at home, or in care homes. We remember all those who are suffering physically or mentally. Heal us and free us to rejoice in the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of our hope and consolation, as we commemorate your death until you come again, we commend to your goodness all who have died. We remember those, our loved ones, those who have died recently. We also remember the families who are bereaved. Send your consoling spirit on those who bear the pains of grief. May we and all your people be united in this foretaste of your celestial banquet, prepared for all in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we rejoice in the celebration of your passion and resurrection, we offer this sacrifice of prayer to your redeeming love. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, 
so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. Tang nevedur argloid avogad achui bobams ar the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Be pleased to accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. On the night before he suffered, sitting at table with his disciples, he instituted these holy mysteries, that we, redeemed by his death, and restored to life by his resurrection, might be partakers of his divine nature. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. 
Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The Body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. We thank you, Father, for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son in this holy sacrament, through which we are assured of the hope of eternal life. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Keep us in the fellowship of his body, the Church, and send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, who has nourished us with himself the living bread, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up on the last day, 
The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Oops, a bit close. A bit of post-service chat then if anybody wants to, rather than just disappearing off into the backdrop. Thank you for lovely sir. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Beryl. Nice to see you. Uh, Christine, thank you very much. Very nice to see you all. One, another thing that we were thinking about, we're full of ideas at the moment, me and Reverend Peter. Thank you, Meryl. Um, we're thinking on Sundays now, for the prayers, what we might do is try and do them interactive. So if anybody's got any things you'd like to pray for, any prayer requests, uh, you can comment. Karis is concerned you're doing her jobs. Oh, sorry, Karis. It's a bit of a one-man band at the moment. Yeah, if you've got any prayer requests, uh, when it comes to the prayers in the service, on a Sunday service, you can mention them in the comments and then we can read them perhaps off the iPad as they come through because uh, our eyesight's not good enough to look at the phone. But that was just a thought. It's a way of involving people. So I missed a comment then. Who was that? Was that Christine? And Suzanne? And Jack too? Oh, Jack too, as in I'm stealing Jack's jobs. Yes, of course. Thank you, Irene. Very nice to have you with us. Nice idea for prayers. Thank you, Peter. We do have them sometimes. <laughs> Good ideas. So I wonder who else is still with us. We've still got 32 people watching, which is rather nice. Good congregation tonight for Corpus Christi. Yeah. Um, as I say, the, 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 the Zoom coffee after service, I think we might start that a week on Sunday. Give us time to set up the Facebook group. But the... Um, what was I going to say? The prayers we can start this Sunday. Carrie says, my sound cut out halfway through. Was it my technology? Does anybody else have that problem? Hope you can hear me now. Obviously you can, because you are responding to the comments. Suzanne's dad is home from hospital. That's good to hear. Beryl's still there, very good. All fine here, as in sound, I assume, Peter, that's good. One does worry. Um, ah, there's your phone, perhaps. Yeah, everybody heard the hymn all right? Was the hymn okay? Do we like the hymn, Sweet Sacrament Divine? Oh, Peter Perry likes. Yes. That is very good news, Suzanne. No problems with sound from Anne. That's good to hear. I froze a couple of times. <laughs> Does happen when you get to my age. Uh, Technology is wonderful, isn't it? When it works. Ah, one of my favourites, Peter says. The hymn. Yeah. This is a nice one, isn't it? I suppose another thing we could do is have hymn suggestions as well, because I normally choose the hymn. Got to be a bit careful with copyright. Um, yes, birthdays. Well, we normally do birthdays in the um, the notices, don't we? But um, we could do it afterwards. No, the hymns. Yes, I have to choose ones that are out of copyright because you need a special license if you're playing them recorded. It's different if you're streaming them and somebody was playing them live, apparently. Um, so they tend to be older ones. But if we want all the old traditional hymns, you know, um, please, any requests. Especially now we're into ordinary time, we can have more general hymns, can't we? Because they're not necessarily related to the season as such. 
So, as a thought, everyone sing lovely hymn. That's very kind. <laughs> Good. Right, well, I think I might sign off there. It's been nice to have a little chit chat with you all after the service. Do you miss singing? Yeah, I do too, actually. You know, you don't, uh, you don't really realise until it's not there, is it? You don't, what is the phrase? You don't notice, you don't know what you're missing until you haven't got it or something. I don't know. Put my thinking cap on. Yes, do. All suggestions gratefully received. Right, I think probably I can sign off. So thank you for all your comments. Thank you for being with us this evening, celebrating this feast. A bit strange, as I say celebrating the feast of the Eucharist when we can't join in with the Eucharist. But there we are, strange times we're living in. It's the best we can do, isn't it, at the time being? And we can't wait to be back. Absolutely. Marion's going to do her shopping. Very good, right. I need my dinner too. So nice to see you all. North Star and see you on Sunday. All right, take care, everyone. Bye now. <laughs>